Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an exponential equation with logarithms. We have x to the power log x equals square root of x to the power ln x. Okay, I know what you're thinking. You already guessed one of the solutions, but there is more to this than you are probably thinking at this point. So let's go ahead and explore a little bit. I'm going to show you a graph and something interesting towards the end. So stay tuned. First of all, I want to take care of this square root. So I want to write this as x to the power log x equals x to the power 1 half to the power ln x, which can be written as x to the power ln x over 2. Great. We got the same base. Now let's go ahead and take care of the exponents. Log x can be turned into an ln by using change of base formula. How does that work? Here's how the change of base formula works. If you have the log of a number like a, since the base is 10, you can write this as log a with base x divided by log 10 with base x. In other words, the a goes here and the 10 goes here. And if this is b, then replace 10 with b. Okay? So that's change of base formula, which is very, very helpful in these kinds of situations. So let's go ahead and simplify the left-hand side. I'm going to replace log x with ln x over ln 10, because this is base 10, remember? And I'm changing it to natural log because I have it on the right-hand side, and the bases are equal. Now we're going to look at the exponents. Before we look into an equation like this, I want to bring the x's on the same side. You know the, the types of equations where they have this or something like this, you know. We can basically solve it without bringing everything on the same side, but it's, I think it's better to get one because it's easier to look at all the cases. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and divide both sides by this which is going to give us 1 on the right-hand side. Okay? So far, so good. All right. Now, we're going to go ahead and subtract the exponents. That's what the rule says. So we get x to the power ln x over ln 10 minus ln x over 2 equals 1. And then if x is real, then we have three cases. What are they? First case is if you think about a to the b equals 1, we can safely say that, hey, if a is 1 and b is a real number, as long as it's well defined, we're good. And then, or a can be negative 1, but then in this case, b must be an even integer, or a different from 0 and b is equal to 0. Okay? Cool, cool. Now, we're going to look at each case. Let's call them number 1, number 2, and number 3. First case, a equals 1. So if x is equal to 1, Nothing undefined in the exponent, x equals 1 is going to work. So that's a valid solution. Good. That's probably something that you guessed initially, right? Let's take a look at it further. a is equal to negative 1, which means x is equal to negative 1. But this causes a problem because if you look at this expression, we have ln x, and it's not defined for negative numbers and zero. So x must be positive, in other words, if x is real. Again, remember that phrase that I've been using if x is real. So this is not going to count. And the third case basically tells us, hey, we want the exponent to be 0, but x should not be 0. x is not 0, but ln x over ln 10 minus ln x over ln, I don't know why I say ln. It's just 2 equals 0, right? Non-zero to the power 0 equals 1. So now don't put the ln x over 2 on the right-hand side. Instead, just take out ln x. Factor out. You're going to get 1 over ln 2 minus 1 half is equal to... If you want, you can make a common denominator, but that's not necessary. Take a look at this. This is the only variable. It can be 0 if x is 1. We already know that from the first case. So we're good. Nothing new, but x equals 1 verified, confirmed. This can't be 0 because those constants are obviously different, ln 10 and 2. So x equals 1 is the only solution that comes out of this. But guess what? This is only if x is real. So we're going to look at two things. First, the results from Wolfram Alpha, which was a little surprising for me when I first saw them. I'm like, what? Are you serious? Let me share with you. This is what I saw. And I'm like, 
Are you crazy? Complex solutions. Not only are they complex solutions, but they are pretty interesting. Square root of 2 pi? Really? Okay. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. And so looking at this problem uh, from this perspective, how could we find complex solutions? All right. If they told you find all solutions, of course, you would look for complex solutions, but that's a little painful. But let's go ahead and take a look at the process. So here's how we can look at it. I have x to the power ln x over ln 10. Remember that we modified the second equation. So we got this. OK. And then we can divide both sides by something. But without dividing both sides by something, I could probably do the following, right? I could kind of write this as follows. x to the power ln x over ln 10 can be written as x to the power ln x over 2 to the power 2 over ln 10, right? Because when you multiply the exponents, 2 cancels out, and you end up with this. So it's good. And this is equal to x to the power ln x over 2. What does that mean? Something to the power a constant equals the same thing. Really? How is that possible? Well, think about it this way. If this is called a, then I have a to the power constant equals a. Well, this just means a to the power constant minus 1 equals 1. And remember, the same cases, either a is 1 and c minus 1 is real number. If a is negative 1, and then go through all the cases. The only case that's going to help us is this one, a equals 1. So that's a conclusion, which means from here, x to the power ln x over 2 equals 1. But we do want complex solutions. So let's complexify this. How do you do that? Let's go ahead and set ln x equal to 2. You know, substitution is awesome. It's going to help us here. If you set it, then x is going to be e to the power t, the exponential function, right? So let's go ahead and replace x with that and ln x with t. So it's going to be like this. Don't worry, I'm going to replace the one in a little bit. And this is going to become e to the power t squared over 2 equals 1. Now, at this point, I want to replace 1 with something complex. How can I write 1 as a complex number? Think about it. On the complex plane, the angle, the argument is 0 degrees or 0 radians, I should say. But it could also be 2 pi, 4 pi, 6 pi, multiples of 2 pi. So we're going to express it as e to the power 2 pi n multiplied by i. Remember Euler's formula gives us this compact form. And this is just awesome. I think it's awesome. Anyways, now here's what we're going to get. We're going to set this equal to 2 pi n i. And for simplicity's sake, I'm going to pick n equals 1. Of course, you can pick n uh, for different values. And then you're going to get other solutions. But they should all agree with the findings. So if n is equal to 1, we get t squared equals, cross multiply, 4 pi i. Awesome. But we're going to square root both sides. And of course, plus minus. But let me just do one of the cases, the positive one. This is going to give me 2 times the square root of pi i, but I'm going to write the square root of i separately because I'm going to square root in a special way. Now, here's what I'd like to do. Split up the 2 into root 2 times root 2, and then pair it up with these radicals, kind of like this. Put these two together and put these two together. Okay? Make sense? <laughs> okay, I hope it does. So we can write it as square root of 2 pi times the square root of 2i. So why do you think I wrote 2i instead of i? Because I do know the square root of 2i, one of the square roots at least, is 1 plus i. Why? Because if you square a 1 plus i, you get 1 plus 2i plus i squared, but i squared is negative 1, so it's 2i. If you square root it, one of them is going to be 1 plus i, the other one is going to be negative 1 minus i, but that's going to give us another solution. Let's stick with 1 plus i. So t becomes the square root of 2 pi, times 1 plus i. Here's the most interesting part. Substitution, back substitute. x is e to the t, and then this is e to the power square root of 2 pi times 1 plus i. This is a complex exponential. Let's go ahead and use Euler's formula. But first, I want you to split it up. And this is where the fun begins. Yes, you can write it as e to the power square root of 2 pi times e to the power square root of 2 pi I. And this is just awesome, I think. Now, what does this mean? Euler's formula tells us e to the power i theta is cosine theta plus i sine theta. But this is just i theta. So the theta is this one, 
Uh-oh, that's our theta. Can you believe that? So our number can be written as e to the power of square root of 2 pi multiplied by cosine of square root of 2 pi plus i times sine of square root of 2 pi. And you can write this in parentheses if you are really obsessed like me or I don't know. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye. Oh, we forgot to look at the graph real quick. Yes, here's the graph. And as you can see, they intersect at 1, 1, which is the only real solution. And this really brings us to the end. Be safe, take care, and bye-bye.